Today, we're going to be exploring which modern mammals could survive alongside the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs were the undisputed rulers of the ancient Earth, having survived and endured to be the pinnacle of evolution for over 160 million years, before their eventual demise 65 million years ago, in which an asteroid the size of Mount Everest struck Earth at a speed faster than a bullet, triggering mega earthquakes, giant wildfires, two mile tall tsunamis, and the sun to be blocked out for years to come, causing the mass extinction of all large terrestrial animals, such as the T-Rex and Triceratops and the complete end of the non-avian dinosaurs. But this mass dying allowed the rise of our ancient mammalian ancestors that were for so long dominated by the dinosaurs, ushering in the era of the mammal, where today, mammals have been evolving over the last 65 million years to become the dominant animals on Earth. But what would happen if us mammals were brought back to the age of the dinosaurs, the time of the monsters, where predators and prey evolved to be giants? Could mammals have survived? Well, let's start off with ranking our first mammal that we are going to send back to the Cretaceous, the rhino. Combined with their large size, thick, armor-like skin, large horns on their head, and surprising speed of about 30 miles per hour, it is easy to see why the rhino is one of the last surviving megafauna alive today. These guys are essentially the tank of the mammalian world, and will do extreme damage to any predator that gets in their way. However, if you put these guys up against the dinosaurs, they will have some serious problems. For one, Rhinos have pretty poor eyesight and struggle to distinguish objects at a far distance. Though they compensate with their hearing and smell, they struggle still against predators that are able to stalk them. Another downside is their comparatively low intelligence compared to other mammals. Though, in the Cretaceous, the rhino would be facing dinosaurs who are also not known for their particularly bright attributes. This would likely be detrimental to the rhino as they struggle to evaluate threats and tend to get themselves in some pretty bad situations. Another factor that we'll consider is their size. While yes, they're one of the largest animals alive today, if you throw them in with the dinosaurs, they're basically just a crappy version of the Triceratops. So it would be probable to assume they would easily fall victim to the predation of large theropods. While yeah, if a rhino charged and hit a rex or other predator full force with its horn, it would do some serious damage for sure possibly even enough to incapacitate or kill it. But if they missed or were too slow in attacking, then the rhino would definitely lose. Following this trend of the rhino and triceratops comparison, they just haven't evolved bony armor similar to that of the triceratops, and their thick skin alone would not be enough to stop the bite forces of most large predatory dinosaurs. And because of all these factors, the rhino just couldn't survive alongside the dinosaurs. If their extinction isn't caused by predation, it would most certainly be caused by out competition from better adapted animals. And because of this, I'm going to be throwing the rhino down to the D tier. They just have no chance when up against predators larger than them. And the only reason I'm not putting them at F is because their size and speed would allow them to at least survive for some time. Overall, there's just better adapted animals that would do what the rhino does, just better. Now maybe if the rhino had some herd abilities like the elephants, then maybe they'd have a better chance. But for now, they're at D. Our next contender against the dinosaurs is going to be the grizzly bear. The grizzly bear is a fearsome predator. Grizzlies are among the biggest and most ferocious mammals in North America and the world. Being well adapted to kill with their enormous size, with adult males often weighing up to 600 pounds or more and standing at about 9 feet tall when on their hind legs. Bears have powerful jaws and razor-edged claws, longer and sharper than that of a lion or polar bear. Grizzlies are some of the toughest terrestrial predators alive on Earth today. Another thing that makes them exceptionally well adapted to animals is their diverse diet, which includes fish, small mammals, moose, deer, berries, nuts, plants, basically anything, allowing them to adapt to various habitats. The grizzly bear stands as a testament to its exceptional adaptability and survival prowess. Now, how would a bear handle a world filled with dinosaurs? Let's break it down. In the present day, grizzlies have basically nothing to fear in their natural environment, most likely just us humans and other large grizzlies. But if they were tossed in a world full of dinosaurs, things would get a little complicated. The thing is, they wouldn't stand a chance against those massive prehistoric predators. Just look at the size comparison. Here are their skulls for reference. Good luck to any bear that runs into that. So in order to survive, they wouldn't be able to rely on their large size and strength. Instead, they'd have to rely on their speed and adaptability. Grizzlies can run at about 35 miles per hour, which is faster than most big theropod dinosaurs. But if they got caught, they'd become an easy meal for the dinos. On the bright side, when grizzlies are young, they've got a neat trick up their sleeves. They can climb trees. This would come in handy as a reliable escape route if they find themselves face to face with a hungry dinosaur, enabling them a somewhat reliable way to stay safe at a young age and their omnivorous diets would hugely benefit them in this environment, 
as they definitely would have no trouble finding some type of food in these forests dominated by ferns and conifers. Lastly, their size would allow them to intimidate dinosaurs of similar size to them. Definitely not full-size T-Rex or Carnotaurus, but they definitely hold their own with dinos like the Ornithomimus. I believe that the grizzly bear could survive, though it would be challenging and because of this, I'm going to be giving the grizzly bear a B. The reason I'm not giving them an A is because they just would not be as dominant as they are today because of their clear lack in size compared to other predators and that could lead them to possibly being outcompeted. So moving on to our next contender, the kangaroo. Ah, the kangaroo from down under. As grazing animals, kangaroos inhabit a similar niche in Australia as deers have in North America, though they have some key distinctions such as their trademark hopping which grants them more energy efficient traveling and higher speeds, reaching a maximum of around 43 miles per hour. Whereas the traditional running of a quadrupedal animal is more efficient at lower speeds and also when traveling in more rugged terrain, but the kangaroo also has some other notable features such as their pouches, which allow them to safely raise their young and nurse them while on the move. These guys are well adapted to their flat open plains, but how well adapted would they be in the environment full of dinosaurs? Well, quite likely, pretty awful. They are well suited to fight against smaller predators like the dingoes they face today, but the presence of formidable and large predatory dinosaurs would pose a significant threat to the survival of the kangaroo. Kangaroos adapted to a relatively predator-free environment, and they would struggle to contend with the intense predation and competition for resources that existed during the Cretaceous era. The kangaroo in its pouch would just turn into a two-for-one meal in the Cretaceous, and because of that, I'm going to be giving the kangaroo an F. And even though I love your movie, there's just no way they'd be able to survive back then. Unless they were able to have an island for them to stay on, where there are no predators for 100 million years. Huh. Almost like that already happened. Anyways, our next mammal is the hippo. And by the way guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I just made another video like this, so if you like that, this one, you'll probably like that one. So go give that one a watch, the link is in the description. Anyways, back to the hippo. The hippo is known for its unique characteristics and intriguing behavior. Their barrel bodies, massive heads, and stout legs make them instantly recognizable. Their size is immense, with adults weighing up to 4,000 pounds. However, even with their large bodies, they are still agile animals, on land and in water, which is what sets them apart from many other animals. They are a semi-aquatic lifestyle, inhabiting a very specific niche, occupying fresh water during the day, and at night, using their well-adapted night vision to move into the grasslands to eat without the worry of predators. Additionally, these guys spend much of their time in water, where they have evolved heads specifically designed to leave their ears, eyes, and nose just above the water in order to watch their surroundings. We also can't forget to mention the hippo's aggressive nature. These guys might look nice, like a fat, nice uncle, but they're not. They're extremely territorial, and if you get in these guys' way, they have no problem showing you how angry they are, and if they get to you, this is what's going to happen. Now how would they be able to handle being with the dinosaurs? Well first we have to mention, just like most other large mammals, they're not that large compared to the size of dinosaurs, which is a recurring theme for our large mammal brothers. You guys just gotta get bigger. For example, the hippo's modern predators are the lion. The lions are just so small in comparison to predatory theropods. Also today, hippos don't really have to worry about crocodiles, because they're just too small to pose a significant threat. But the crocs back then, just take a look for yourself. And these guys would have to inhabit the same waters that the hippos would be living in, which would pose the most significant threat to the youngest and adolescent hippos who are not yet full size. But a large pack of hippos that are adults probably could ward off these giant beasts, and they probably would be able to fight off a lot of the large terrestrial predators just because they spend most of their time in the water. And if a T-Rex tried to swim at these guys, the hippo probably would win, which would just be crazy to even attempt to do that against a hippo. So anyways, if the hippo could find something to eat, then the crocs would be their only real huge issue. These hippos have been a hard one for me to rank on this list, and because they just hold such a unique position in the animal kingdom, so to me, if the hippo could ward off the giant crocodiles, which would be tough and risky to do, then I believe the hippo would have a chance at surviving. And because of this, I'm going to be throwing the hippo at C. I'm willing to change this tier position. Tell me your argument in the comments. I think the best chance for the hippo is to avoid predators, and depending on if they're successful at raising their young into adulthood and keeping them away from be being eaten by crocodiles, that would decide if they're viable in the Cretaceous or not. Tell me what you think, because this one was tough. And now on to our last mammalian contender. The one and only bat. Bats hold the trophy as the only mammal to have evolved the ability to fly, carving out an ecological niche in the predominantly bird-dominated sky. 
instead of direct competition with birds, bats instead opt to hunt at night, using their echolocation rather than their eyes to be able to hunt their prey. And just for clarification, we're going to be focusing on micro bats, because we like the bug hunters. But before I move on, I need to point something out I found out while researching this video. Look how scary these flying fox bats are. Oh my god, their wingspan is 6 feet. This is crazy. If I had this in my backyard, I would pass out immediately. Anyways, what if we transported these creatures back to Cretaceous, hitting them against early birds and pterosaurs? As mentioned before, they might not even have to compete at all to begin with. Given their remarkable ability to bypass competition by hunting at night, bats' adaptations to their environment coupled with their nocturnal habits probably would enable them to avoid direct confrontations. Also, combined with the fact that bats already have outcompeted modern birds in their ecological niche, it's fair to say that bats would outcompete primitive birds and pterosaurs if any were in direct competition, such as the Agronathids, though they lived in the late Jurassic anyways, but there might have been some other animals adapted to live similar to bats. Overall, the bat's superpower of echolocation would be extremely powerful in the Cretaceous, especially with the large amount of bugs that existed such as mosquitoes, moths, and grasshoppers that the bats are known to eat today. The bat would have a field day, and because of this, I'm going to be giving the bat an S on our tier list. Its ecological niche would allow them to survive and multiply without a doubt, and it would be reasonable to conclude that because of their adaptations and ability to outcompete birds, that they would too be able to transfer this niche to the time of the dinosaurs. So those are the mammals we have for today's video. Please subscribe because I'm doing one video a week. Let me know if you agree or disagree with my points and explain below. The feedback on my first video is great, and if you want to watch that, the link is in the description. So let's keep it going. Thank you for watching, and Jehona out.